welcome to Our Lady of Lourdes Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm Monsignor Jim Losanti, asking you wonderfully to join us in prayer as we celebrate the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let's pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And to better celebrate Mass, let's take a look at our lives and confess our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have, Lord, have Christ, have Christ, have Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that we may realize the freedom that God has given us in making us his sons and his daughters. God our Father, you redeem us, and you make us your children through our brother Jesus Christ. Look upon us, give us true freedom, and bring us to the inheritance that you promise. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, Fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets captives free. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who are about down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Praise the Lord, my soul. The fatherless and the widow the Lord sustains. But the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. You are God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, my soul. A reading. From the letter of St. James. 
My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, sit here, please, while you say to the poor one, stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. proclaim the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia! 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 My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hands on him. Jesus took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Eveta, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them not to, the more he proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. And this is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for being with us on this 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Before I get into the readings, maybe a, a little story uh, about uh, a wonderful guest that we had on the show a while back, Ed Asner. And I mentioned him because, as you probably know, the great actor who played Lou Grant for uh, the Mary Tyler Moore Show and the Lou Grant Show, won seven Emmy Awards, passed away this, this week in his 90s. But when he was a guest on our Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim program, uh, I mentioned to him that in Wikipedia, it gives his whole biography, but one of the things it says is that um, he considers himself, he identifies as a Jewish atheist. So at that point, you know, approaching 90 as he was, I said to him, Ed, at this point in your life, are you still an atheist? And he smiled and said, you know, Monsignor Jim, the closer I get to the end, the more I hope you people are right. I mention that because now Ed knows, I hope, the fullness of life and love in heaven, and that this uh, idea that we have, this promise of Christ, that there is in fact life beyond this life is not just a nice and comforting idea, but also the truth and real. And I pray that Ed Asner, wonderful man who did so many kind things for people, uh, now knows the fullness of life and love in the kingdom of heaven. Uh, the closer I get to the end, he said, the more I hope you people are right. And I hope we're right to it, and that you experience the fullness of that rightness by eternal life. Okay, let's get into the readings. Let's go to the Old Testament reading, the prophet Isaiah. If we give our lives to God, I mean, if we really give our lives to God, he promises right out of the gate, fear not, I'm going to take care of you. Now, who of us doesn't have fears that sometimes hold us back? He's saying, give me your life, and you never need to fear again, because I've got you. You can fall straight back, and I'm going to catch you. 
You don't have to worry. I'm on your side. But he gets even more specific than that, and in some ways it's a precursor of what we're going to hear about the man in the gospel who's cured by Jesus. Here's a great line. The lame will leap like a stag. If you trust in God, the lame will leap like a stag. I don't think he's just talking about people who have physical paralysis. I think God is talking about all the paralysis in all of our lives, all the things we always plan to do, hope to do, want to do, know we should do, but we don't do because fear holds us back. Uh, In all of our lives, if we had to write the book of our lives, I think so many of us would probably be able to say, uh, woulda, coulda, shouldas rule our lives way too often. Uh, And it's because we're afraid in so many ways of failure. If we try, we may not succeed. Uh, What about people rejecting us? What if this doesn't go right? Better to just stay immobile. When it says that he causes the lame to leap like a stag, God is promising us, if you give me your life and trust me, I will remove the paralysis that comes from all those ways in which we should do the right thing, but don't. You know, for many years, more than 30 years, I've been very active in the pro-life movement, and I believe in it with all my heart. But i got to tell you, there are times when I get invited into media situations or to give public speeches on this topic, and I just know that no matter how you cut it, half the people in the audience are going to love you and half of the people are going to detest you whenever you get involved in the issue of the right to life. So there have definitely been times when I say it's just easier to be passive, to not get involved, to let somebody somewhere do it. I think when God takes our lives into his hands, he gives us and me the courage to do the right thing, not to be paralyzed, but to when you see something that needs to be done, do it and not expect that someone somewhere will do it instead. We're called on to put aside the paralysis of our lives by trusting in a God who says, the lame man shall walk when I lay my hands on him. And then related to that in so many ways, the tongue of the mute will sing. All those things that go unexpressed and shouldn't be, you know, don't you have lots of them in your life? I know I do. I'll give you an example of what I mean. One of the things I do around Valentine's Day every, every year is I, I try to renew the vows of those who are married and Uh, But also, in church, I ask people to turn to the people who they come with from their families, husbands and wives, and to look them in the eyes and to say, I love you. I truly love you. You mean the world to me. Thank you for being my life. Here's the troubling part for me. At the back door of church, too often, I'll have people say to me, that was really nice, Father. You know, the truth is, we haven't said those words to each other in a long, long time. Well, why not? Do you love the people in your family? Of course you do. Do we really need to go through the experience of losing people we love in order to say what really matters? It happens to us time and time again. We don't want to say the things that really need to be said, whether those words are, I love you, you mean the world to me, or the words, I hurt you, and I'm sorry. What I did was foolish, and I want to apologize. Or the ability to let go of our holding a grudge against people and to say, you did hurt me, and I accept your apology, and I forgive you. I really forgive you. It's over. Let it go. For some reason, we don't say the words that really matter. We become victims of the tongue of the mute. We think of that as a physical disability, but I think our inability to say what really matters is both an emotional and a spiritual crisis as well. Say the things that matter. Don't wait till someday down the line, you know, at the great funeral for that person you love, you're going to tell the world how much they meant to you. Too late! The time to say the words is today. The time to say the words that matter is right now whether those words are an apology, or I forgive you, or I love you, or this is what I believe and I'm not afraid to tell you what I believe, let's not allow ourselves to be that person whose tongue is held because we fear. What if I tell somebody I I love them and they don't say I love you back? That's okay. What if I say I'm sorry and they don't say "I'm, I'm forgiving you? Who cares? You know, it's like what I say to you guys all the times when I say, at least once or twice a year, I say, would you please pick up the phone or send an email or send a card to someone with whom you're estranged and let them know, let's find peace? Yeah, but what if I call and they hang up? Or what if I send a message and they never respond? What if I send a card and and they never respond? Who cares? You do the right thing and you please the only person who really matters, the God who says, I free your tongue to say what needs to be said. What are you holding back? What am I holding back? Let's say the words that matter, not someday, not down the line, but today. Okay, let's go to that second reading, the letter of St. James. God shows, and we're being instructed by St. James as Christians, God shows no partiality. What does that mean? Favoritism. 
You know, in the seminary, we always, in my time, I don't know what it's like now, but in my time, there was always a seminarian or two who won the particular approval. They were the golden boys of the seminary. For some reason, the people in charge really liked this one more than anybody else, and they got special treatment. I'm sure that's not unique to the seminary. In all walks of life, whether it's in school or in athletics or on the job, you always find some people seem to get all the breaks. Uh, they are the favored ones. They're the chosen, right? They're the golden boys and girls. God doesn't work that way. He sees every one of us as equal in his sight. And he says, if you would follow me, you've got to do the same thing. And that's difficult, isn't it? You know, uh, I kid all the time about parents like, you have four kids, but who's your favorite? Oh, no, I love them all equally. I don't know how they do that. I'm not a parent, but I'll tell you, I think I am starting to understand that you love differently, but you love each. And that love is not given better or worse for one or the other. And that's the way God is, too. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't say to us, uh, Jim, you're the most special priest in my mind. No. He loves me, but he loves Father Kevin, he loves Father Andy, he loves every priest, and loves what they're doing with their life when giving loving service to him. He's definitely a God who shows no partiality, and he's asking us to do the same. Now, what do we usually show partiality about? I have this great friend, Jack. I love him so much, but he never tells me about someone he met without telling me, this guy has an incredible house. This guy makes so much money. This guy has a powerful position in this company. And I say to him, Jack, who cares? What's the man like? What's he, what kind of person is he? Has he got a good heart? Is he someone who's, who's patient with people? Does he love his wife? Does he love his kids? I don't care what position he holds in the company or what money he has in the bank or how big is his house. And Jack, you shouldn't either. Stop identifying people that way. But it's a very normal thing. It's that partiality we're told God doesn't have and we're not supposed to have. I had a great example of this as a pastor. You know, we're supposed to be concerned, as we are, about the finances of our parish. So I had this, like, internationally respected fundraiser, Marty Moran, raising money for my last parish. And he said, you know, we're going to come to a point where you'll meet with all the major donors in the parish, and we're going to, you know, ask them for more for this cap capital campaign we had. And I said, you know, Marty, um, while I appreciate what you do for a living, I said, here's my rule of thumb since I got ordained. I don't want to know what anybody gives in the collection. I don't want to know who the special people are. I don't want to know who the major donors are because I don't want ever to treat anybody in the parish better or worse because of what they give. And Marty looked at me and he smiled and then said to me, well, that's very nice, but it's time for you to grow up. And you know what he was saying is I have a responsibility to the parish and I've got to know who gives and can afford to give, and so they do give. But it was a good lesson for me because I was trying to practice no partiality. Sometimes you do the best you can and you're going to be a little partial. But we have to at least try to see every person we meet as equal, not only in the sight of God, but in our eyes as well. And to favor one over another, to treat people differently because of who they are, where they come from, what's their color, what's their culture, what's their religion, what's their attitude. Man, it's always easier for me to love people who say, good morning, Monsignor, it's great to see you, with a happiness in their face and a happiness in their voice, as opposed to the local crab. You know, hello, what's so good about it? How's your day? I don't want to talk about it. Okay, well, we all meet people like that. It's easier to love the nice ones than it is the sour ones. No partiality means no partiality. To struggle, not just to love the ones who are easy to love, but to love the ones that are toughest to love, and in so doing, we are doing what Christ himself calls us to do. Finally, let's go to the gospel. So this poor man, right, he hasn't been able to speak, he can't hear. The Lord comes along and heals him. Here's what I love about this gospel. The Lord doesn't want people just believing in him because he can perform great works of, of miracles and these magical cures. Jesus wants us to believe because we trust in him and we have faith. Not because, oh, look, he performed the miracle, now I'll believe in the guy. So he tells this man, hey, I need you to be quiet. I'm glad you're healed and you have a normal life back, thank God, but I want you to keep silent about it. I don't want you to go around telling people. And what does he do? He and everybody around says, you wouldn't believe what this Jesus did. Now, on the one hand, we can say, uh-oh, this guy's in big trouble. He disobeyed a direct command from Jesus. But I think we can understand. If you've been touched by the Lord, if you've been uplifted by him, if you've trusted in him, if he's a true friend to you, if you really, really believe, I'm telling you, you can't keep silent. You want to tell people about the glory of your faith and the joy that comes with being a believer. I get actually physically sad when I'm interviewing someone or talking to someone who says they're an agnostic or they're an atheist, 
because I realize what a gift it is to believe, to actually trust that God is God, that Jesus is the Son of God, and, and to really know that, that conviction, you can't keep silent. I don't want to tell the whole world, I believe in Jesus, I think we're going to die and go to heaven, I think he forgives all our sins, I think he's the essence of divine mercy, and aren't we blessed to know him? I don't want to be silent about that. And I don't think any of us should be. You know, I may have shared this story with you before, but I think it's, it's revealing. I had in my first parish a young adult group, 250 people between 18 and 30. And this one guy, John, he came to me one time. He said, hey, I've fallen in love, and I'm going to get engaged. And, and he, Monsignor said, uh, he said, here's what I'm, I'm wondering, though. I don't know if this is good or bad. He said, but the girl I'm, I'm dating, she's, uh, she's not Catholic. And I said, well, I'd like to get married at St. Boniface, where I grew up. And she said to me, you're Catholic? And now, he'd been dating her for three years, and she's going to marry him. And she didn't know he was Catholic. So I said, John, shame on you. You know, people should know that we're believers. They should know that we love Jesus Christ. And yes, they should know that we're Catholic Christians without shame, embarrassment, or I forgot to tell you. We're called on like that man who's cured by Jesus to say, look, I wish I could keep it a secret, but I can't. I love the Lord, I love my faith, I love my church, and I want the whole world to know. And if you don't like me for that, that's okay. i got to tell the world who I belong to, who I love. Have you ever been really in love, deeply, wonderfully in love? Can you really keep it under wraps? Don't you find when you really love somebody, you got to tell the whole world, I've been so blessed. I found somebody who I love and who loves me. Let me tell the whole world about it. Well, the same thing is true for God and our Lord Jesus. I'm in love with the Lord, and I want people to know. And so did that man in the gospel. Okay, um, two final things. All right, promise to wrap it quickly. One is, here's my thought, and I'm going to tie together a couple of things about presidents. Can you imagine, if you're old enough to remember President Richard Nixon, if instead of all the cover-up, he had said, look, I encourage people to break the law because I wanted to win this election, and what I did was wrong, and I'm sorry, and I hope the American people can forgive me for my foolish ambition. I think he would have been forgiven, and I think he would have been president for his full two terms instead of resigning. Well, how about this? Instead of hiding it and denying it, Bill Clinton said, I was not faithful to my wife, and I'm sorry. For her, first of all, I want to apologize, and I want to say to that woman who I used and exploited, I'm sorry. And I want to say to the American people, this is not the proper behavior for a guy who holds the highest office, and I'm sorry I made a mistake, and I hope you can forgive me, and I think we would. And then I heard this speech last week where instead of admitting that the situation in Afghanistan was disastrous beyond belief, the president actually gave a talk saying, oh, no, it really went just as we hoped. Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah, no, we did a great job. No. And you know what the American people do when you lie to them? They get very cynical about government and leaders. I think Mr. Biden and Mr. Clinton and Mr. Nixon would always do better if they just said, here's the truth. We messed up. We went into Afghanistan for right reason. We tried to leave for right reason, but it got messed up. And I'm the president and I take responsibility. And Mr. Trump should do the same. I see he's beating up on Mr. Biden when it was his idea to get out of Afghanistan. All these guys who try to spin it, I think we always do better by telling people the truth. And by doing that, freeing ourselves of the need to lie or to cover up. And that's not just a lesson for presidents, it's a lesson for you and me. You know, if you don't lie, you don't have to worry about your lies and wonder, I wonder what I told that person and whether or not what I said was true. I wonder what story I told them and how do I keep that story going? You never have to do that if you just tell people the truth. Finally, I told you last week, this weekend is mom's birthday, 101, Cecilia McNeil Lasanti. So I say happy birthday. And you lucky folks, I haven't done this in a while, but this is for you, mom. Uh, your favorite song, the song we sing at night before you go to bed, here it comes. I'll be loving you always With a love that's true always When the things you plan need a helping hand I will understand always, always Days may not be fair always That's when I'll be there Always, not for just an hour, not for just a day, not for just a year, but always. Mom, happy birthday. We love you. I love you. 
and thank you for everything. Oh, wait. A picture of mom. <laughs> Wouldn't be me without that. This is mom, not recently. This is mom in 1950 holding my older sister. Uh, that's not me in the bonnet. That's my older sister, Joan. And that's my beautiful mother, Cecilia, now celebrating her 101st birthday. Please keep her in your prayers. Let's profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now with confidence in the goodness of our God, let's offer our prayers of petition. That the church guided by the Holy Spirit will faithfully proclaim God's law as revealed through sacred, script, through sacred scripture and tradition. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all grandparents, that they may experience the joy of family, the blessing of health, and the gift of gratitude. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That more people will come to love the Mass, and that our Sunday encounter with the Lord will give us strength to experience the present with courage and to go forth with hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer that those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially Daria Lapare, Charles Barhold, Mary Teresa Agolia, Joseph Agolia, Nicole Conti Toussaint, Nancy Joyce, Marie Iannone, Jolie Bernstein, Jean Laurie, Jeannie Glessing, Efren Bacani, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Thomas Gamera, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, Linda Jupio, Jose G. Dunga, Thomas O'Sullivan, whom we remember at this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. You know, uh, Mary just mentioned Ephraim uh, Bacani. You've seen him here at this Mass, many Masses, so often because he's one of our lectors. Uh, a really beautiful soul, and he's uh, very, very sick. Sick probably unto returning to God. So I just ask you to keep him in your special prayers. A wonderful man, and I'm not just saying that because he's really sick, but he really is a wonderful man. And if he is going home to God, we will miss him because he's been such a vital part of our parish. So. Ephraim Bacani, we pray for him and the consolation of his family. I also want to pray, uh, you know, I, I get messages all the time just before I came over, and I don't want to leave this one off. Uh, dear Monsignor Santi, I'm contacting you because one of my colleagues needs a lot of prayers. Her dad has just been diagnosed with cancer, and she just had a baby. I'd be so grateful if you could ask people to pray for my colleague, Kim McGregor, and her dad, Jim. So, yes, we're praying for both Kim and Jim. And among those who are sick, also to remember uh, Jeannie Glessing, and I want to pray for Patricia Colton and for Carly Fugala. Let me pray too as well among the sick for so many others and bear with me. Bill Kershaw, uh, Peter Visconti, Margaret Lasanti, Doug and Mary Ahodo, Barbara Turley, baby Emily Quart, Barbara Truglio, Edith Consiglio, Mary Littress, Veronica Tucker, Thomas Lauer. I pray for Kevin Shields and Georgia Gill and Michael Cataldi. I pray for Michael Cardone and Charlene Eisencraft. Noah Torelli, Don and Jean of Azevedo, Lori Lishan, Georgie Ritter, Al Clementi, pray for Angelo Clementi, 
Gary Hudson, Jean Lucich Dwyer, Michael Campagna, Laura Elizabeth Steele. I pray for Anthony Posterino and Dennis Sweeney, my friend Vern and Amelia Alaka, Rita Pizzi, Marilyn Segulo, my friend Sean McGrail. Let me pray too for Steve Gagliardi, for Kevin Byron, for Byron DeMello, for John Rogers, for Judy Crum, for Richard Ferrara. I pray for Tommy Burke. I pray for Mary Lou Frisbee. I pray for Brian Brown. I pray too for Dorothy, the mom to Sheila Blanchard, uh, Russell Castro Giovanni, Tom Crimmins. I ask you to pray as well for Loretta Sweeney. I ask you to pray too for John and Roseanne Simone and for Barbara Simone. Let me pray too for uh, Dawn Spitali. I want to pray for Anthony Scotto, for baby Henry Grayson, and Jim Harmon, and Judge Tony Falanga. Tony's home from the hospital. I'm so happy, Tony. Keep on healing. I pray for Heidi Ignoski and Van Tutwiler. Of course, I pray for my mom, Cecilia, Jose Cruz, Leanne Lasanti, Vita D'Amico, good friend, Ron Citrano, Jim Barr, Anthony Kremi, Howie Pomerantz, Jack Carroll, Jack Spin and Sloan, and we're praying for you, Jack. We want you home and well. I pray for Nancy Lang and Joan Donovan and Dean and Merkin McDonald. Pray for Marilyn Arbogast and Nancy Palumbo and Pat McTaggart and Bob Coaches. I pray for Melissa Bergman. Uh, Melissa's got some serious stuff she's facing. Praying for her great parents who were there as a great support for her. Praying especially for Melissa. Ann Mendes, Nick Castellano, Matthew Edward Lewinsky, Jorge Clemente, Anthony Ponte. I pray for Emma Nickel. Uh, I want to pray for Joseph Sardone and for Kevin Boyle. Kevin, get out of that hospital and come home. Uh, Marion Barone, I pray for all of those who are addicted in any way, shape, or form to be freed from their addiction. I pray for Millie Bolando, Marie Tenay, Marlene Keenan, Bill Franca, Bella Glauda, uh, Ryan Terpstra. I pray for Dennis M. Dowd and Jennifer Murphy. Uh, I pray for Diane Pimonte and Dennis Donovan and Jamie Scotto. Uh, I pray for Father Frank Nelson, for John O'Brien. Let me pray, too, for those who have died. We mentioned some, but let me add to the list. Uh, I pray for Sophia Maglione, Nicholas Delario, Pauline Agame. I pray for Bill Kelly and Catherine and William Donovan, Billy and Michael Sarasoli, Richard Rosmarin, Lorraine and Ray Campbell, Nicholas and Sally Quartararo, my dear friend Corinne Locke. I pray for John and Maureen and Ann Raber, Arlene Wolfarth, Mary and Ed Raber, Chuck DeHart, I pray for John Slade and Joseph Monopoly, and John and Alma Kappa, Fel Morali, John Neeson, Michael Manzella. Pray for Kenny Bolando. I pray for Father Jim Frazier, Christina Formato. Christina just had her five-year anniversary in heaven. Great gal, and praying for the comfort of her sister and her parents. Pray for Cynthia Prague and Caroline Dodaro, for Gaetano Sal and Angelo Emilo, Anthony Preziosi, Kevin Brown, Ed and June Jandovitz, Pauline Romano, Mary and Charlie Nobile, Linda Nobile O'Brien, Sam and Rose Pecora, Irene Romano, Marjorie Geary. Let me pray for Anne Marie Tenet, for Billy Taylor, Monica Kerrison, dear Monica. I uh, pray for Regina Robinson, Robbie Purick, Jimmy Soldo, Joan and John Donnelly, Richard Jackal, Henry Meyer, Barry Champney, Colin and Tommy Ryan. Pray for Monsignor Jack Alessandro, Eleanor Mazzi, Brian Hussey, his beautiful daughter Suzanne Scanio. Mary Rose and John Brosnan, Ronald Chiappo, Leon Sherman Jr., Marisa Colo, Kate Kelly, Connie and Sal Cusimano. I pray for Ted Scorcher, for Monsignor Tom Spadaro, for Norbert Bobby Gomez, Vincent Castoria Jr., Jerry Monk. I pray for Dave Robin and Thomas O'Shea and Matthew Toriello, Marie Austin, Emily LaFaso, Vita Palmieri, Kathleen Smith, George Floyd, John Arturi, Raymond Kennedy, Connor and Will Robles, Mary Ann Hayes, Tommy Valva, Pat Cronin, Dominic Rosado. I pray for Luigi Conti and Tracy Wachowski. I did her wedding, Tracy's. I pray for Dale Louise Odom, Elmer Schantz, Joe and Marion Bacigalupo, Alex Haliasos, and the comfort of his parents. I pray for Pat Cesar, Peggy Barr, Marvin Klein, Jerry and Edward Casal. Pray for John McMacken, Raymond Hussey, Judge Don Belfi, Tino DeBello, Nicholas Lasanti, Father Joe Lukaszewski, Father Ken Marks, Father Tim Hurton, Joe and Joan Largan, Ed Almer, Paul Stashute, Gary and Mike Scorcher, Nick Martone, Constance Polio, Captain Tim Murray, 
Uh, Jerry and Michael Pangalo, Norma Calabrese, Dottie Lauer, Bob Perez, John Glauder, Joseph Lovett, Carolyn Duvall, Marie Casavecchi, Scotty and Nina Passarelli, Bob and Pat Caliban, Scott Pollock, Ronnie Bedix, Joe and Peggy Bauman, Tom Sully O'Sullivan. I pray for Ed Asner, who I hope experiences now the fullness of life in heaven. Peter Gannon, Margaret and Katie O'Connor, Tommy Englehart, Victor and Lillian, Bobby and Marge, Tom and Helen, Barlow and Ethel, Edward Riker, Frank DiGiorgio, Danny Carlson, Luke Johnson, Marie Baranis, Evelyn Lalicki, Frank Kilgannon, PJ O'Rourke, Robert and Joan Cook, Anna Gomes, Paula Struzzieri, um, Anna and Peter Canal, Leonardo Playa, Donato Forlenza, Aniola Ferrara, Marie Hoyecki, John Bolando Sr., Marion Harrington, Marie Gail Penny. I pray too for Detective Anastasio Sacos, Michael A. Diorio, Captain John Robert Minatoli, Louise McNeil, Lena Lasanti, Mary Uli, Genevieve Minatoli, uh, Virginia Dennert. I pray too for Florence Vago, for Joseph DiMartini, for Luigi Conti, for Christopher Leiborn, Adina Placido, Helen Kidash. I pray as well for Anna Malandro, for James Zidi, and of course I pray for Madeline Olari as well. Dorothy Ferrara, Tracy Timothy Terpstra. Um, by the way, for any of my parishioners, that young man who died, James Zidi, uh, wrote a book, and his parents, his family would be so comforted if they could find a copy of the book. So I'm going to put that in the bulletin next week, and if you happen to have a copy at home, bring it to the rectory so I can share it with, uh, with his parents. So for all the people who have died and their happiness in heaven, for all those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, for their caregivers, for our first responders, our police and firefighters, our EMTs, our doctors, our nurses, our teachers, all those people fighting COVID. I pray too for our country and especially for those in the military and for their safety. I pray for our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan and for their well-being, for our friends in Haiti who have suffered immeasurably as well, and for your private intentions and mine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's turn all this over to our Mother in Heaven, as together we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Be by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. God. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. God of peace and love, May our offering bring you true worship, and may it make us always one with you. And we ask you to grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. You never cease to call us to a new and more abundant life. God of love and mercy, you're always ready to forgive. We know we're sinners, and yet you invite us to trust in your mercy. Time and time again, we broke your covenant, but you never abandoned us. Instead, through your Son, you bind yourself even more closely to the human family by a bond that can never be broken. And so in wonder and with gratitude, we join our voices with the choirs of heaven as they sing your hymn of eternal glory. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. God of power and might, we praise you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation. He's the hand you stretch out to us as sinners. He's the way that leads to your peace. God, our Heavenly Father, we've often wandered far from you, but through your Son, Jesus, you have brought us back. You gave him up to death so that we might turn again to you and find our way in love to one another. Therefore, we celebrate today the love and reconciliation Christ has gained for us. And we ask you, Father, to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine by the power of your Holy Spirit so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. While he was at supper on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread in his sacred hands and gave you, Father, thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness. He gave the chalice to his disciples and friends. And he said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, our Lord, until you come again. Lord our God, your Son has entrusted to us this pledge of his love. We celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, and we bring you the gift you've given to us, this sacrifice of love and reconciliation. Therefore, we ask you, Father, to accept us together with your Son. Fill us with his Spirit through our sharing in this meal, and may he take away all that divides us. May the same Spirit keep us in communion of mind and heart with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Father, make your church throughout the world a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace. You've gathered us here today around the table of your Son in fellowship with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her devoted spouse, and all the saints. In that new world, where the fullness of your peace will be revealed, gather people of every race, every language, every way of life to share in the one eternal banquet with Jesus Christ, who is our risen and our loving Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Remember in those readings, we were told that if we trust in God, all the paralysis goes, all the things we should have done, would have done, could have done, all the things we should have said but didn't say, it all goes if we trust in the Lord. Let's now say the Lord's Prayer and hope that he will remove from our hearts all the fear and anxiety that keeps us from doing and saying the things we should. In that hope we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. Amen. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. I want to first of all thank you, many of you, um, who supported a special collection we had recently uh, for a mission supported by Father James Bergasi, who's a uh, priest who helps us on weekends. He's the chaplain at Good Samaritan Hospital. And his order has a special place in an impoverished area of Ethiopia. And they asked for our help. And the people of Our Lady Lewis responded by being able to send $5,000 over to that mission a wonderful, wonderful uh, sign of, of caring. And that's what we're called on, I think, to do for so many people in crisis around the world, whether it be Afghanistan or in Haiti. And as I mentioned before, I want to encourage you to think about the possibility, if you don't have a collection in your own parish to help these troubled spots, to support Catholic relief services. Just go online, and you can either mail them a check or do it online. But uh, they go to the worst places on, uh, on Earth, and they help to rescue people who are in serious trouble. Uh, the other group I think personally I've been supporting, and I, I like a lot of Doctors Without Borders. Again, they go to those places nobody else wants to go to. They're in Afghanistan, they're in Haiti, they're all over the world uh, volunteering to bring medical help to those most in need. So whether it's Catholic Relief Services or Doctors Without Borders, please do what you can. And would it be me if I didn't invite you to watch on your computer, personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Losanti on YouTube, 
And uh, just to mention this week, what a great guy. Father Sean Magaldi is the vocation director for the Diocese of Rockville Center. This kid, not a kid, he's ordained a bunch of years, maybe five years, but he's young. And he's, he's so full of insight and hope. And you know, for an older guy like me, it's so wonderful to see a young priest who has a great zeal for Christ and the church. And he's our vocation director and talks about how he came to be uh, both vocation director and his own journey to priesthood and his uh, growth in faith in his family. Uh, Father Sean Magaldi, this week, please don't miss him. He's really good. And the next week, if you're a baseball fan, Stephen Matz. Now, Stephen, we know most of us because he was a great pitcher with the Mets. Now he's up with the Toronto Blue Jays. But the guy loves Jesus and wanted to talk about his faith. And uh, he's just great. So Stephen Matz is our guest next week. If you have any of your kids who are interested in baseball and baseball players, it's good to listen to a baseball player, a professional who's talking about why he loves Jesus. And then the week after that, I want to say it right, uh, Tamira Mensa Stock, who is she? She was the winner of the gold Olympic medal in women's wrestling. And she's uh, an African-American, great lady, and uh, she loves the Lord, and she talked about how much she loves the Lord. And she's the one, you remember her, because when she won her gold medal, unlike some other folks who used that opportunity to protest, uh, this beautiful Tamara, Tamira took the American flag and she wrapped herself in it and just said, I am so proud to represent my country. I love America, and I'm just so happy that I could bring home the gold to this country I love when she won the gold at the Tokyo Olympics. So she's our guest two weeks from now. Bottom line is we've got some wonderful people talking about their faith and their values. Go to Personally Speaking with Monsignor General Santi, and please uh, hit like and subscribe. Let's close now with our, our final prayer. Lord God, your word and your sacrament give us food and life. May this gift of your Son lead us to share his divine life now and forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And, with you. and may Almighty God bless you and your families. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Spirit, may the wounds that living brings plunge our pain, our sin, our sadness deep beneath your sacred springs. Weary from our restless searching, let us lord us from your side. We discover in your presence peace the world cannot provide.